In this video, I'm going to show you how to completely transform your Ubuntu desktop into a pixel perfect replica of Windows 11. We are talking the iconic center taskbar, the modern start menu, the themes, the icons, the stunning blur effect, yeah, the complete package. This is going to be perfect for anyone considering the jump from Windows but still want that familiar feel. I've tested dozens of themes, extensions and tweaks and I'll be taking you through the simplest process to get the Windows 11 look on Ubuntu. And this is going to be so good, so precise that it's going to fool even Microsoft themselves. Because this is Linux, where your imagination is the only limit and your desktop can look like anything you want. Let's jump right in. Alright, let's start this show. I'm excited. This is your standard Ubuntu. We are on Ubuntu version 24.04 LTS. 90% off will be using this, but I guess it'll work on newer versions of Ubuntu as well. Before we do anything here, we need to prepare the system for what's to come. We will be installing some important and powerful software here. We are making some major changes to the UI of our system. So if you want to make a time shift backup, I highly recommend that you go ahead and do that and also include your home directory files because we'll be playing around with a lot of configuration files. Alright, let's start by making sure the system is up to date. Open a terminal by pressing Ctrl plus Alt plus T. Then type in sudo apt update semicolon sudo apt update hyphen y. Hit enter, enter your password and let it do its thing. My system is completely up to date but once it's done, just restart your computer. By the way, each and every one of the commands that I'm going to use in this video, you can directly copy paste them from the description below. Yeah, you don't need to type it all. It's given below for your convenience. Enjoy. Then let's quickly install some additional utilities that we may need during the process. Type in sudo app install git make get text hyphen y and hit enter. Next up, we are going to go ahead and install two tools that are absolutely essential for this transformation. That is the extensions manager and the gnome tweak tool. The extensions manager lets you install thousands of gnome extensions here and these extensions well, they have the power to change this desktop's behavior and visuals to a very deep level as we'll see in this video. Then there's the GNOME tweak tool. Now this has some deep settings that are not available in the settings app. This is very important too. Let's quickly check that they both are installed. Let's go ahead and open the GNOME extensions manager application. Okay, let's do this. The first thing that I want to do here is recreate the windows taskbar or the bottom bar. Now Ubuntu provides us a dock on the left side of the screen. This is great. It lets me open my favorite applications quickly and also switch between running apps, but this needs to go. This dock is actually an extension called Ubuntu dock. Open up the extensions manager from the menu and in the system extensions, you will see Ubuntu dock. Just turn it off and there it goes. It turns into a bottom dock that pops up when you press the super button. That's the default vanilla GNOME behavior. Now GNOME Desktop gives us literally thousands of such extensions that let you tweak and customize things here. Click on browse here to search and install these extensions. In the search bar, type in dash to panel and give it a second. And here we get the results. Now the first one is dash in panel, not dash to panel. We want dash to panel, which is the second one here. Make sure to be careful. You want to install dash to panel created by Charles G99. You can either click on install here or open up the extensions page to know more about it. Click on install and give it a second. You will immediately notice the top bar vanishing and we get a bottom panel which looks surprisingly like the Windows 7 taskbar. How cool is that? Now only thing that's left to do is make it look like the Windows 11 taskbar. Right click on the free space on the bottom panel and click on dash to panel settings. As you can see, we get exhaustive options here for customizing this panel. Be careful when scrolling here. Scrolling on these stack to left options here changes them and it completely messes up the bottom panel. So don't scroll with the cursor on these options. Windows 11 has a center taskbar. So we're going to go ahead and change that. Then also change the left box to monitor center and the show application button here. We can just make it invisible by clicking here because we won't be needing that. But for now, I'm going to bring it to monitor center and I just want to see how it looks. And I think the date needs to be moved completely to the right side. Now let's jump into the style section here. The icons in the windows taskbar are smaller and they also have way less margin. Let's tone it down here. I'm gonna go with zero for margin and six, maybe eight for the app icon padding. Eight looks good. Then let's go ahead and change the indicator style for running apps. Change both two dashes here. This extension gives you extreme flexibility. You can change a lot of things here and I encourage you to check them out. 
you know to make things more to your liking but for this video i think we are good you can also disable the show overview on startup because that's not windows behavior then let's jump into the fine tune section and adjust the font sizes i think it's around 10. i'm going to keep 16 for now and maybe change later on but i'm pretty sure it should be set at 10. Let me go ahead and tweak the padding here. I think zero works fine, but let's just see how it looks. Man, this bottom panel looks good. I don't miss windows, but this, I admit, I do. You know, I've been using Fedora Silver Blue recently and without dash lock. So this bottom panel that we have created here is looking very tempting to my eyes. And this is so good for productivity. App switching, launching favorite apps, it's all just a single click operation. So even for people who don't want the windows look but just want a very functional and polished bottom taskbar, yeah, this is how we do it. Now for the central piece of this puzzle, we will be recreating the start menu of Windows 11. For this, we will be using the good old Arc menu extension that makes a drop down or pop up menu instead of GNOME's full screen app grid here. But for that to work properly, we need to install a package called GNOME menus. While I understand that GNOME has its own workflow and the app grid is a big part of that, I always preferred pop-up menus. They are faster, less intrusive or disruptive and they let you stay focused. That's one big reason I've stuck with Linux Mint for so long. Its menu never got in the way of what I was doing. Then open up the extensions manager and search for Arc menu and install the one by Andrew Z. Then let's quickly open the dash to panel settings and we'll see another entry here called show applications button which belongs to Arc menu and just make it visible here, also move it to monitor center. Then open the arc menu settings and in the menu layout section, we get a large number of layouts. Under the modern menu layouts, we get a pre-configured option called 11 and this is exactly what we need. Select it and here it is. I know this doesn't exactly look like the Windows 11 menu, but we'll take it one step at a time. But as you can see, the layout is here. But the position is slightly offset to the left side of the screen. And to correct that, jump into menu visual appearance section and in the override menu location, select bottom center and voila. This menu has the pinned app section, the frequent app section and all app section along with search bar and these bottom quick shortcuts exactly like Windows 11 start menu. This is a really well done layout. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. Next up, I want to change the wallpaper to Windows 11's official Bloom wallpaper as without it, we won't be getting the same vibe that we are aiming for. Normally, I'd recommend that you choose any wallpaper you want but I think I'm going to recommend that you go for the official wallpapers here, just for this tutorial. You can maybe change it later on. I have given the wallpaper hub links for the light and dark versions of the wallpaper in the description below. Just click on the links and download the wallpapers. You will need to rename the wallpapers and maybe move them to the pictures directory and right click on the image and set it as wallpaper. And it looks like we are halfway there. Okay, now that we've got the layout, the menu and the wallpaper in place, it's time to complete the illusion, so to say. We are going to give Ubuntu the full Windows 11 aesthetic. That means we'll be applying a matching GTK theme, shell theme, switch to Windows 11 style icons, and bring in that familiar set of mouse cursors. Now I've said this before, themes like this are one of the reasons I love Linux. The fact that I can make it look like anything, whether it's Windows, Mac OS, or something completely custom. Check out some really fantastic ones on gnomelook.org. That level of freedom is not just possible on a lockdown OS like Windows. Let's go ahead and grab the theme. Now there are many theme options to get the Windows 11 style on GNOME, but we are going to download a very polished Windows 11 style theme pack from gnomelook.org. It includes both light and dark winds, and above all, it comes with an installation script to make the process easier. Fluent is another really good theme that replicates the Windows look on GNOME desktop. I will link to that as well. You can use that if you prefer, but I'm using Windows 11 style theme pack. Using the GitHub link given in the description below, download the zip file. Open it in the downloads, extract it, jump into the folder and open a terminal there. You can also use the git command that we installed earlier if you are familiar with it. Then run the install.sh script and this does everything that needs to be done automatically. It moves the files and folders in the right location automatically. 
and while advanced people will not have a problem doing this manually, this can be tricky for Linux newcomers. That's why I like that it's automated here. Then let's get the icons using the link given in the description below. Get the Windows 11 blue icon pack. There are many here but get the blue one and extract it. Give it a moment to complete. Be careful not to be confused by all the stuff that we are downloading here. Once extraction is complete, move into the folder and cut or copy both these directories. Go to your home directory by clicking on it in the file manager in the left pane here, third option here in the video. Then I want you to press Ctrl plus H to show the hidden files and folders. Ctrl plus H hides them back, do that later. Then we need to create the default folders needed to place these. For that, quickly open up a terminal and run mkdir-p icons and themes folder. Open the dot icons folder and paste both the folders that you copied. Then we download the cursor theme using the link given in the description below and we extract it and add it to dot icons folder as well. Alright, now it's time to apply all the things we have downloaded. Open the tweaks tool and in the appearance section, turn the cursor to windows cursors. Icons to either windows 11 blue or windows 11 blue dark, both work great. And yeah, look at the files icon here. It's all changed to windows icons. Change the legacy application to Windows Lite or Win11. We should be having one more option to change the shell theme here. For that, we need to install another extension called User Theme. Let's go ahead and quickly install it from the Extensions Manager. Once it's installed, you can just click the gear icon here and turn it to Windows 11 and boom! You will see the bottom panel become semi-transparent immediately. Alright, here we are. Now let's add in some polishing touches, the final coat of paint as you'll say once AI takes up your job and you become a painter. I don't mean an artist because AI does that too, I mean the wall painter. One of the most important but underrated parts of any desktop environment is the font and Windows 11 uses a very specific one, Sego UI variable. We download it using the github link given in the description below, extract it and open a terminal inside the folder and run install.sh. This will automatically fetch the Sego UI fonts and install it in your user's font folder. Once that is done, open up the GNOME tweaks and go to the font section. Set the interface text font and document font to Sego UI regular. Font size of 11 works for most screens but depending on your screen resolution, adjust it if you feel like you need to do so. You'll immediately see the difference. App menus, title bars, the arc menu, everything takes on that soft, clean Microsoft feel. I love Ubuntu fonts but man, does this look premium or what? Okay, if you've used Windows 11, you've seen that soft blur behind the taskbar and menus. It's not fully transparent, it just gently shows a bit of the background behind the UI. That's called the Mica effect and while it's not built into GNOME like it's into KDE Plasma, we can emulate it pretty well. For this, we'll use a pretty famous extension called Blur My Shell. Open the extensions manager, search for it and hit install. Now I feel that the theme that we installed here, it's providing ok blur, but it's not quite right there. You might choose to skip this step entirely if you're ok with the blur that we are already getting. Once it's installed, click on the gear icon to open its settings. In the panel section, turn on blur, then set the mode to static. It's more stable and doesn't glitch as much on lower end hardware. But if you have a good GPU and you are ok with that added processing overhead, you can go ahead and use dynamic. If you use dynamic, you can set Sigma which is the blur strength to around 20-25 and set brightness to around 0.75. These values will give you that soft frosted glass feel without overdoing it. Another really cool thing here is we can add the same frosted glass transparency blur effect to application windows as well. This I really like. But this is completely optional. Now this is not on windows 11 but it's cool so let's check it out. You need to play around with the settings here to get the right look. Keep the brightness at max, turn down the opacity a bit and sigma should be around something 20. I think we better use opaque focus windows or else it will hurt the readability of text. The blur my shell extension has extensive customization options and you can change many UI elements to a very deep degree here. I feel that it's better to start small and tune up the look over a longer duration. Now I don't want to get overwhelmed with this. The Windows theme that we used here, it comes with a dark variant as well. In fact, it has multiple variants which you can check out using the GNOME Tweaks application. But if you just change the mode to dark mode from here and the applications will immediately change color to dark. I'm also going to change to darker version of the wallpaper. Now you can automate this but for now I'm going to manually do this. And the application window looks stunningly gorgeous in the dark theme because we already made them frosty and transparent. Just look at the app center here, it's gorgeous. 
I think we have created a very convincing and beautiful imitation of the Windows desktop using GNOME. And I don't think we had to put in that much effort as well. This was fairly straightforward. But if you look carefully, there are some things that can be polished up. You know, font size and some elements can be adjusted. The file manager can be customized to look exactly like the Windows File Explorer, although I like it as it is, and I'm gonna leave it at that. One thing that some people might want to do is change the taskbar color to a whitish tint to more accurately match the Windows 11 look. You do that by opening the dash to panel settings and in the style section, turn on the override panel theme background color and select the color to white. Make sure the panel background opacity is at 80. This does it. Another thing is you can turn on dynamic background opacity and when an application is brought closer to the bottom panel or when an application is maximized, you can push it all the way to 100 and this looks fantastic. I'm gonna revert back as I like the darker taskbar. Yeah, there are many touch-ups that you can do but I like what we have achieved. Alright, there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, if you found this video useful, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also leave me a big thumbs up. All the commands and links used in this video are given in the description below. You can copy paste those to get things running quickly. And if you are interested in learning up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out the top 10 hottest Linux apps that you should be using in 2025. It's got some really cool ones, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out.